Uh, we'll do that. And thank you, Sebastian and Samantha, for helping me. And for uh, Sebastian for being our technical support here. Uh, my name is Rama Wahele. I am a R&D manager for LifeClean. Uh, my background is microbiology, where I did it actually in uh, 1996 in Centennial College in Canada. Uh, but I also have a biochemistry background in, as you can see it here, for Swedish Agricultural University, where I did it, uh, my graduate, and also veterinary chemical, uh, veterinary medicine. I'm not in the veterinary uh, uh, doctor. Uh, uh, during my PhD also, we have done it quite a lot of actually collaboration with the Swedish uh, Veterinary Institute, which is very much community, uh, uh, the disease in animal uh, veterinary medicine. So that is a little bit about me and I'm responsible for life clean, as I say, you know, R&D, but also all the tests that we do, whether it's a veterinary related or either with say healthy care or in the food sector. So we follow all the, you know, the European guideline, the, you know, the, the EPA in America and so forth. So that is what we actually do it in life clean. What we're going to talk about it today is that uh, to smolding classification, which is actually both, it's actually originated from America, but also many medical devices in Europe actually are adopted this classification. And also this classification goes into it, what is really the difference between the low level, intermediate level and high level disinfectant. Uh, and why is it necessary to use high level disinfectant when it's needed to be to, to use for sterilization? And of course, which is really the most important thing here is that life clean is classified as high level disinfectant. So to understand the whole concept is that disinfection and sterilization are very necessary for medical device, but the healthcare profession, uh, professionals are the one who actually primarily decided what is actually the item is, how it should be used. I mean, the item is intended use, how they either clean, disinfect it, or also sterilize. That knowledge, it's very much in, into the healthcare professionals, even though Keeping in mind, even though, of course, that the manufacturing company also indicate, but also these are where there actually comes mainly that how the healthcare professionals see that this is when they're using, whether it's actually a sterilization, whether it's a disinfectant, a disinfection, or also either cleaning that. So this is the guidelines that everyone has to be into that understanding. What is this intended use? How is this? would be used for this medical device. So before we go into the, this complex, uh, and I'm trying to use as much easier words that as I can, um, that we needed to understand this terminology, cleaning, disinfectant, sterilization, and exposure time. Cleaning, it's a the step one when before any disinfectant or sterilization actually apply to it. So you need to remove all the material that the foreign material, it can be the soil, it can be the organic material, but it could be also any other things that, that has to be removed either using with water or with a detergent, depending on how dirty it is in the environment. This is very critical because some of the disinfectant, even though they are really high level, the organic materials actually can interfere product efficacy, which means that even if they were actually that the clean environment that the products take, if you apply when there is actually dirt in the surfaces, that it will compromise the product's efficacy. Then it comes to disinfectant. The disinfectant has a very broad, you can go from the low level, intermediate level, and also you can have it that. But it is mainly that the agent that inactivate the disease causing pathogens or harmful microorganisms, that it can be the virus, bacteria, and so forth. And then we come to the sterilization. In sterilization, you go any further uh, compared to the disinfectant because once you use in the sterilization, you completely de actually de uh, inactivate uh, the, the bacteria or the virus. This, it could be absolutely, you know, there could be the heat, 
but also can be the, you know, which is the physical, but also the chemical. And that say that either you're using disinfectant or esterilization, the exposure time, it's a very critical. If you're using for the esterilization and, and using for autoclave and you actually apply low, uh, short times to, to, you know, to autoclave, that means that might not reach to the completely, you know, the inactivate either you had a bacterial spores or, or, the, or, or, or other virus or whatever. So this is very critical. At the same time, also that for the disinfectant that you needed to have that the disinfectant that you apply on the surface has to be absolutely uh, 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 have the, the, the contact time. If it's five minutes, if it's two minutes, if it's one minute, if it's 30 seconds, if it's 10 minutes, it has to be wet on the surface that's applied. And that is what is really the most critical in either disinfecting or sterilization. I don't want to go into the details about biocides or medical device, but I just wanted to point out maybe some of you know that LifeClean has been actually certified as the MDD class two product. So I just wanted to share with you that we, uh, our product, Life Clean Disinfectant or Disinfectant Plus, are classified as a biocide. So we registered. So the biocides, biocides, it's uh, any kind of uh, uh, product that can be really uh, uh, kill or destroy the microorganisms. Generally, it's used for the cleaning and disinfectant in the public area, but of course in the hospitals as well. That say that this is followed that the European Chemical Agency, which is called the ECA, but also in Sweden here, it's controlled by a Swedish medical agency. Biocides regulation that you have the from the, the product types, which is called that it's from uh, one to 22. And we life clean, uh, our product are registered from two, which is the healthcare, the three and veterinary and four for the food. Uh, most of the countries that. Uh, then also, we also uh, registered for the medical device use, which is that uh, the MDD class two, whether it's a one step product, which is the life clean disinfectant plus, and we have the life clean disinfectant the standard, which is the one step, uh, two steps product, which means that one, when I say one step means that this product is decided to use in the dirt environment where either you have any kind of uh, organic materials or either the body fluid. Whether we have the life clean disinfectant standard where you can use two steps, you clean first and then you disinfect afterwards. So just the two picture. And of course, the, the MDD product is uh, required for the medical device, which is the, you know, the, uh, the um, in the industry and it, sell the, uh, it has the CE mark. And, and the product normally, it's actually has much tougher regulation compared to the biocides. The advantage of having the MDD is that the product can be sold there throughout Europe when it's, it has the CE mark. So we go to the, what we actually starting with the Spalding classification, which is the, uh, the minimum uh, required for the disinfectant or either sterilization. This is really very important that to understand whether it can be really used for the instrument that either it's a critical, semi-critical or non-critical category. Uh, when Spalding uh, uh, classified, he also, also connected to these critical, semi-critical and non-critical to germicidal effect, uh, efficacy uh, activity, which means that high level, intermediate level, and then low level uh, disinfectant. Uh, this is very important to understand because in order to decide, shall I disinfect it, shall I sterilize it, these three, the, the high level, intermediate, are also connected to this classification. But also we have to refer all the time what the manufacturer, the instruction of use, it's actually recommended, whether it's a cleaning, disinfection, sterilization are recommended. So this is very important that in order to understand and also to use the, this uh, classification, we have to also know that what's the manufacturer recommended, 
but also where it's intended to use. And that is the, the number one that we have to keep it in mind. So here where you can really see that, you know, the, uh, the uh, I'm just gonna move maybe you down here. Uh, this classification, you have sterilization and anything that can contact with the bloodstream or either the open tissue, it has to be sterilized and absolutely must because the risk of the contamination and also causing the pathogen entering the bloodstream, which they can cause the septis is very high. So this has to be completely sterilized and that's the critical level. Then it comes to the high level disinfectant and the high level disinfectant can be that any dental equipment, which is not uh, uh, the devices in contact with the mucous membrane and non-intact skin. So that you require high level disinfectant to that. And then it comes to intermediate and also the uh, low level disinfectant, uh, disinfectant, which is non-critical device. And this can be the x-ray, it can be the blood pressure uh, for the calves and so forth. Uh, I wanted to emphasize that this Spalding classification uh, does not apply all the time. And the risk of the infection transmission can occur any level, which means that the intermediate level, the low level, for example, if you have on the services where there is in this intermediate level or low, low level, um, which we will go later on that, you know, the clostridium difficile, this can be really required high level disinfectant. And that is a really when and what microorganism that we have in place is the most critical that we have to keep it in mind. So even though you have the sterilization, high level disinfectant uh, for the critical and semi-critical, we have to also keep in mind that what is the, the pathogens that we deal in, in it in the services. So now we come to the second, uh, uh, the, which is the, what is, what are the difference between the low level, intermediate level and the high level. And as I just emphasize this a little bit, high level, that is the, the any disinfectant that kill uh, all the bacteria, uh, especially bacterial spores. And the contact time, it's a very critical because if you have more than 10 minutes, it's not really classified as a high level, but also that the product, if it's 10 minutes, it has to be wet on the surface, this 10 minute duration that. And then you come to the, the intermediate level, which is the intermediate level that you have the, all the vegetative bacteria, including uh, uh, tuberculosis, uh, some enveloped and non-enveloped uh, uh, non -enveloped viruses, fungi, but not the bacterial spores. And of course, also that there are always that non-enveloped, non-enveloped that can be that small non-enveloped virus, and then you also have the large non-enveloped virus. So with that, we have to keep it in mind that. And then here you have that the, the low level uh, disinfectant, which is really kill all the bacteria, uh, um, all the vegetative bacteria, including the 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 uh, accepted the tuberculosis and so forth, that you have the little bit non-enveloped uh, 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 enveloped virus, and then you have the some fungi. That's to say that it depends on some of the low-level bacteria. There are some low-level uh, disinfectant that absolutely kill the uh, the uh, uh, enveloped virus and uh, also the fungus and so forth. So here, as you can really see that I summarize it again, that when you have here, for example, that you have the spores and that's definitely, it's really required the sterilization. You have the high level and there are some high level disinfectant that even though they call the high level, it might not take the, the spores and of course that it does not, the intermediate level and the low level does not take. And as I mentioned earlier, that non-enveloped also can be that small and large, and they are really different. And then you have that, for example, that the intermediate level and also some uh, disinfectant to take here that. And then you go to the fungus and it's very much the same and mycobacteria. And of course you have also that some take the intermediate level 
And then where you have also that uh, the bacteria, which is all, they take that and the envelope the virus, which is in this case, the COVID that you have all the bacteria takes that. The, the here also is, as I mentioned, that the most critical that whether it's intermediate or the, or, or the low level, that is the device is the key part of the keeping the patient safe from the healthcare associated infection, which means that you can have it here intermediate level, for example, that some, what is the bacteria on the surface can be spores. In that case, how do you really disinfect it in this case? Even though it's not required for the high level, if you have a spores, then you definitely have to use the spores in order to disinfect that. So this is very critical in to, to keep it in mind. Uh, when do I need to use this sterilization and why? And I think he, part of that, we already really covered that in uh, how one determine whether to use the, you know, the, uh, uh, high level disinfectant or to to use the you know to sterilize the device uh, first and foremost uh, that we have to actually uh, use and look at it what is the manufacturer's instruction of use but also of course what is the way it's intended to use whether it's it's going to be contacted with the bloodstream or is it in the mucous membrane which is the high level required or either for the sterilization when it's going to contact it in the blood these are the one really that will determine when, where should I need to use or when should I use for this sterilization? What kind of sterilization that I really require that? So that has to be keep it in mind all the time that what is really needed to be used, what is intended use that. And here is that this, by using this, you actually kind of minimizing the risk of the infection transmission from the patient when it's in contact with the device. And that contact, it could be that either the, it's in the blood or either for the mucous membrane or, or the, either in the surfaces. And these are the critical that we have to determine how do we actually decide it that what we, when are we using for either to sterilize or to use the, the high level disinfectant. I don't wanna go into the details, but this slide summarized that uh, healthcare associated infections that when the hospital uh, has outbreak, the mostly the one who really suffer is the patient that, and they are the one who identify the, you know, the, the infection that uh, when they get the infection to either the hospital or somewhere else or that. And the whole idea that, as we know, whether it's antibiotics or either for the disinfectant, we keep seeing that we've been using more and more and by using different disinfectant, uh, but also high concentration actually can really uh, uh, lead to have persistent. And in order to minimize that, one has to know that what is really the concentration that I really needed to kill, what, what either, which services that it could, should be used, what is on the services, is it bacteria spores, is it uh, viruses and so forth. And that way we can absolutely minimize to the risk of developing a microorganism called becoming resistant. Uh, but how do I know is it right concentration? But that is the, what really we have to decide first and really see that if it's spores, you need high, disinfect, high level disinfectant. What kind of services it is, where it should be really used. If it's a, uh, uh, equipment that should be used for the sterilization, use the sterilization. So these are the groundbreaking rules that the healthcare professionals should really determine what should be really used in order to minimize uh, the developing uh, uh, the disinfectant resistant. And we come in last, uh, we're very proud, Life Clean. We have uh, been classified 2016, the, one of the Danish uh, uh, SSI, uh, the, the health agency in Denmark, as a high level disinfectant. And what is really grounded this high level disinfectant that they based on uh, this within the 10 minute frame that if the product has the bactericidal, fungicidal, uh, virucidal, uh, enveloped, non-enveloped virus, mycobactericidal, and sporocidal within 10 minutes. And that say that LifeClean fulfilled this requirement within 
maximum uh, five minutes to two minutes, depending on what we actually, what concentration we use, of course. So as you can see that the product is classified as a high level disinfectant. And normally, and high level, it also comes with the price because the, that some product actually are uh, high concentration. It takes at least the 10 minute, but the life killing disinfectant is uh, based on chlorine dioxide. It's, it's stable and it's ready to use. So no medicine really require here that. One of the critical in the healthcare or either in the veterinary is that if you have a product which is high concentration, and then you actually need it to dilute, that itself, it's actually causing the problem that the one who's diluting might not know that what concentration, how should they really dilute. The second thing that is so very critical is that sometimes, especially, you know, the hospital, some hospitals, they have their own uh, cleaning staff where they actually train them and then they know how it should be done. But also some hospitals rely on the, you know, the, uh, the uh, outside uh, uh, to source for the cleaning staff to do that. And that can be really very critical that if you dilute it lower than what the manufacturer recommended, that could be really the problem. But here in life clean, the efficacy, it's a very low concentration. We have for the virus, 17.5 BBM to spores, 20, 200 BBM in 30 seconds to two minutes, which is absolutely really, really a uh, uh, very low concentration. And amazing that to achieve that uh, uh, 30 uh, second. This 17.5, I have to emphasize is that it's non-enveloped small viruses, which is uh, polio, adenovirus, morovirus, and so forth, that it's within 30 second, 17.5 BBM. And of course, we claim that uh, for the spores in this case. Um, the disinfectant has to, you know, to be in order to say that absolutely it is really uh, not causing resistant. What we did it was that we look at it under the microscope that how this whole within the one minute contact time uh, or either 30 second or two minute, how the bacteria spores are actually killed. And what you can really see here is that you see that once you apply to the life clean, it's penetrated into the bacteria's membrane and break down. And what happened that by breaking down both, you know, the membrane, it's actually breaking down the DNA and the RNA, which means that by completely eliminating and breaking down this, the complex bacterial uh, uh, tight membrane, uh, especially for the spores, then you have no longer actually that bacteria can be regenerated and survive it's in this uh, very harsh uh, uh, environment. But also very con short contact time. That is very essential that you really see that for life killing that it has a full efficacy. And of course, it does not really require that it has to be applied in the uh, several times. Where some disinfectant, it might need it to reapply it and to reach the full efficacy uh, where it's really needed. Uh, this could be a little bit complex, but it's also shown that the can chlorine dioxide, uh, you know, develop resistant, which means that, you know, the, the uh, for bacteria resistant or either could be the virus or it could be the spores and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and the answer is to no, because what it really shows that, the, uh, and the slides that I show earlier is that what chlorine dioxide is that it's diffused in the bacterial cell membrane, you know, the breaking down. But when it's really breaking down and continue to break down that, it, it will destroy completely the RNA and the DNA. And what is happening is that then bacteria will not be able to multiply that by multiplication that in, in inhibited then there will be absolutely no production that bacteria grow. I have to emphasize also here that when we do some of the tests, some standard require that in order to see that, that the bacteria does not survive, for example, a four field test, which you use wipes on the surfaces and then you have the, you know, the dry bacteria on the surfaces and then you apply the wet wipes on the surfaces. After that, you grow at least 
24 hours or maybe four days that was to see if there's any bacteria survive on this, uh, you know, the, by uh, inoculating uh, the, the, the growth of the bacteria into to see that how long that bacteria can regenerate or can survive or can multiply that. If you don't see that any bacteria grow within 72 hours, which some uh, American standard require for the EPA, it shows that there's no bacteria survived at all. And which means that by not seeing at all, nothing really survived, that definitely it will lead that you completely uh, uh, break down and destroy the bacteria to multiply. And that will lead absolutely it will be no resistant. Here also it shows that uh, uh, life clean as a high level. This we borrow that the Center for Food and Security and the Public Health from the, the University of Iowa State University. This is light coming start from there. And what it emphasizes here is that different, uh, uh, for example, oh. disinfectant. It shows that here you have the acids, alcohols, aldehydes, alkalis, and then different the halogens here, oxidation agents, phenols, and the quaternary ammonium combined. Uh, what is really the most important is that the most susceptible, and then you have the most resistant. And if we look at it, the mycoplasma is the smallest bacteria that, and then you have the gram negative positive bacteria, and then gram negative, uh, gram positive bacteria, and then gram negative bacteria. Uh, pseudomonas that they use because some most of the pseudomonas actually it's associated by a film so that could be the one reason here and as you can see the enveloped and then non-enveloped fungal spores and then you have some viruses that they actually kind of really differentiated some spore, uh, viruses here and of course you have the mycobacteria here and then you have the spores and the coccyces. And here, as you can see, life clean, we have tested up to the cococides uh, that is effective. Most of these, you can really see that, for example, here, some they take, some don't. And you, as you can see that there is a variation, some take the, the non-enveloped and depend on when you look at it here, for example, alcohols here, that it's a non-enveloped viruses and then also that if they take the envelopes and also that chlamydia here that you can really see. So this really emphasize that what are these really, you know, the disinfectant that we use, but also keep it in mind. Uh, if you have a life clean where you use in 17.5 ppm, would I could definitely say that here non enveloped viruses the other product in, in the similar category could be really used at 5,000 ppm. And that is a huge really difference between the, for the comparison in a very short contact time, which is the 30 second or, or, or very short contact time. But also the spores, if you look at it here, you have this spores where you actually that only need it for 200 ppm and some may even need it much higher than that compared to the other, you know, what product, but also what is the contact time. The contact, contact time, it's very essential to keep the service wet, but also that once you apply, especially in the veterinary area, that you need to know that if actually the product has efficacy for the, the what it's really claimed in this 10 minute contact time. So thank you very much uh, for listening. And uh, if you have any question, please, uh, you know, we will take the questions.